What's up guys, JS2 Sense here, and you know what's really popular right now is PC Building Simulator, a game I played and actually live streamed for three hours and a lot of people watched it. But what was really intriguing about that for a lot of people to watch was the fact that uh, it's like, hey, you're a PC tech who builds computers and fixes things all the time, and it was really interesting to see you do it in a video game. Unfortunately, things are not always as easy as a video game, so that's why I'm gonna be playing PC Simulator, or Build Simulator in real life, by trying to figure out what is wrong with my friend's computer. The new DG7 series cases from EVGA offer PC enthusiasts more of what they love, like tempered glass side panels, vertical GPU mount, integrated RGB control board, DG tuner, and an awesome three-year warranty. To learn more about the DG7 series of cases from EVGA, head to the link in the description below. Now this is one of those situations where basically the information I got is you cryptic at best because I got a, it doesn't work, we're not getting video. When it did work, we got some weird messages. Uh, the power button doesn't work. So just one of those like, I don't know what's wrong. Can you fix it? How much will it cost? It's like, well, I don't know how much it's gonna cost because I don't know what's wrong. So I gotta fix it or figure out what's wrong before I can tell you a cost before I can even fix it. At the end of the day, they might not even want to fix it. It might cost too much. So I don't know, we'll have to see. So, but like I said, what I, what I got out of them informational wise was that it didn't turn on. The reason why you're seeing these cables just hanging out the front is because one thing they did know was wrong was uh, apparently a roommate or something accidentally pinched and cut a wire on the front panel connectors by putting the case back on wrong or something. And they bought this like cheap China eBay thing that hangs out the front, which is really awful. So I'm gonna repair the stock one so that we can get rid of this. First thing you gotta do obviously when you troubleshoot a computer is at least try and post and see if it will turn on. So I don't know if any of these buttons. Okay, so I guess that one was power. So we've got power, the PC is turning on, there is that. I don't really know what the specs are on this computer either. So I need to take off the side panel that is not captive. Okay, good to know. And right off the bat, I can see we've got, well, we got a graphics card, obviously. It's a Radeon card, it's an XFX card. One of the power cables is not even plugged into it though. So Phil, if you wanna get in here so we can show that. This is an eight pin, what is this? Oh, their SSDs just kind of flop in here. Okay, so first thing I noticed here is that power to the graphics card is not complete. So let's go ahead and Turn this off. This may not even fix the problem because I did talk to them on the phone and they removed the GPU and did a few things on my suggestions. This one doesn't even click in. So I think this was just, it didn't get plugged back in after they put it back. This isn't even like clicking in there. Wow. So our power supply here is an Antec 650 continuous power. All right, see if that made any difference. This fan isn't turning, so there's that but I think we just got video. That's a good sign. So here's, here's a, a thought of mine here. I just mentioned how hard this was to plug in. And I'm thinking that maybe this power cord didn't get plugged in all the way. Cause this one I can't really get to click. So if it was like that, let's see if it would start. Um, one front fan is not turning. One top fan is not turning. One rear fan is not turning, but we still have video. I really didn't want to have to tell them, unfortunately your video card's bad because this is the worst time to try and fix that. One other thing they did say was happening that initially started people getting in here and poking and prodding was that it was not booting to, uh, to Windows. So let's see what happens here. Let's see if we get to Windows. Oh, launch startup repair. Okay, so we'll let that go and see what happens. Obviously we were having some fails. One thing they were saying though is it was booting to Windows 7, but they had Windows 10 installed. So they were like, why the heck is it booting to Windows 7? As you can see, we are not booting to Windows 10 right now. So clearly, we have two hard drives that have an OS partition on it. And it sounds to me like we are dealing with just, we're dealing with uh, the BIOS not booting to the right drive properly. My sister used to, used to crack up because you actually sprayed my ass, like physically. Yeah. <laughs> now the reason why I'm thinking maybe their SanDisk SSD is not booting Windows 10 is if you come up here and look carefully, this is the way it was plugged in, like barely hanging on. So this wasn't plugged in all the way. So we're gonna go ahead and just, here we go. It still probably wasn't set to the right drive in the BIOS. So let's go ahead and get into the BIOS. See if we can see what the boot order is. So we just go over here to boot. We can look at what our boot options are. Boot option one. Yeah, see P3, boot option two is our SAN disk. So we wanna set boot one to our SAN disk boot option three to whatever. So obviously we've got three drives in here because we do have an optical drive. Haven't seen one of those in a while, but we got one. So that's gonna be the DVD-ROM and then this GE slot 0400. And then we've got, of course, 
our 114 gigabyte SSD. So port five, WDC, D100 too. I don't even see a Western Digital drive in here. Oh, here it is right here. <laughs> what is that? So why is it? So now we're getting a smart status bad backup and replace F1 to run setup. So here we are in the BIOS. Fortunately, I know the ASUS BIOS pretty well, even though it's an older motherboard. So we can go down to advanced. We can go down to our SATA configuration and smart status check. We can simply just disable that. Uh, it's not something that's really going to matter on this person's use. And I think that this will be fine. We'll probably be able to boot up now. I'm almost feeling like I should do sort of a complete sweep of this computer now, check things like the cooler thermal paste and all that. Cause obviously we've had, we still have like three fans that are not even running right now. We got to figure that out, but we should see, and there's windows 10. So that is now fixed. We're just checking them off the little list, right? We're getting to the point where it says place PC by the door. <laughs> Cause you know, PC building simulator reference once again. And there we go. Knowing my luck is probably passworded. And there it is. <laughs> Mickey, why you do this to me? Mickey. Oh, I wonder if it's, no, it couldn't possibly be Mickey Mouse. So now we're gonna go ahead and tackle the fans. And this is what I found in the back in terms of wiring. So you can see we've got a lot of adapters going on here. So I think what's gonna be easiest here is to just kind of unplug all of this and start all over. What I did notice though, is this goes to the rear top fan that wasn't turning right here. This is why adapted into this, which I don't even know where this goes. Like it goes up. Oh, this is the rear fan right here that wasn't turning. So these two were connected together, but nothing was plugged into it supplying power. So there's the reason the back two weren't going. Now we gotta figure out why this bottom one wasn't turning. It's very possible this fan could just be bad because this is indeed plugged into this adapter, which was plugged into a Molex and not turning. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna test that bottom fan with one of my, you guys always ask me why I have these cheap little Whoa, I almost dropped one. Now they're garbage anyway. Okay, people always ask me why I use these cheap little power supplies. The reason for that is because it's perfect for testing things like water pumps and fans. I would never, ever in a million years power a, a computer off of this. This is perfectly fine for fans and stuff. And because I wanna make sure that those fans actually work, that will save me a lot of time. Oh, I think I just figured out why that fan wasn't running. It's getting tight, look at this. The ground, the ground wire? Wasn't even pushed in. So let me see if that might've been all we needed to do. There, we clicked in. I have a feeling I might've repaired this whole PC without it costing them a penny, but there's one other little piece of information they gave me that has me extremely concerned. We'll talk about that in a second. First, let's see if everything else is working. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> I didn't even touch these. No, the power switch. Yeah. Oh, I flipped it from on to off. Okay. They need to put that in PC Build Simulator. Like, remember to flip that switch. Like, they need to add that. Looks like all of our fans are turning. We've got video. Let's see if we get to Windows. It's a good sign. Okay, Mickey. <laughs> this one's diesel powered. Okay, clearly we have a bad fan in there somewhere, so. It, it, the list goes on. Oh, this is the video that keeps on giving. So clearly one of these fans have a bad bearing. It's the rear fan. So this one's got a bad bearing. So that's what I do. If I hear a bad fan, if I hear a bad fan sound like that, I just stop them with my finger to see which one stops making the sound. So now it's time to replace, uh, replace that fan. Fortunately, we have a box of just stock case fans We'll throw that in as a bonus. But I guess they never really mentioned the sound because the fan was never even running. So that's something they didn't even know about. PC building simulator, although very fun. Trust me, it's fun. And I play the hell out of that game. It, it would be nice if it had uh, these scenarios where like maybe you fix something, but then something else kind of goes wrong mid, mid fix, which completely jacks up possibly your profit margin. Yeah, the bearing on this guy. But look how dirty and dusty it is. That's why it's important to keep your fans clean because believe it or not, these fans are fluid lubricated. They get dust in there, they get dirty, and then you get, hear that? I'm gonna fix the front panel wires that got pinched and cut. You can see it right here, they severed this wire. 
and that's obviously why the front panel wasn't working. They said the button wasn't working. Clearly that's one of the actual circuit complete wires rather than one of the LEDs. So we're gonna fix that so we're not dealing with this. And then we are going to clean the system. We're gonna give it a good cleaning, at least as best I can. That way when we give it back to them, it's in as best a working order as it can possibly be. So you gotta figure out which one's reset and which one is power, obviously, because reset's the smaller one, power is the big one. So this is repairable though. I'd, they don't have to run these, these crappy little plugs that they're running. So I am just going to go ahead and strip off a little bit of wire right here. Normally I would use normal strippers. I'm just using my side cutters for this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off. See, this is like double pinched. You see how it was pinched right there as well? Snip that. So now what we're gonna do, this is a much heavier gauge than we need, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a piece about yay big. So yeah, I actually have a quick stripper, but not here. So I'm just gonna cut off a bunch of this wire that I don't need. I mean, it's not like any voltage goes through this thing. This is just completing a circuit. So when you push the power button or the reset button, you're completing a circuit to the motherboard that tells it this button was pushed or that button was pushed. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna take heat shrink Normally this would be soldered. I'm not gonna solder it because it's not gonna really be moving. We're gonna take our piece of heat shrink. I'm just gonna twist this together. Like I said, if you wanted to do this 100% legit, you would then solder this. But we're just gonna be holding it together with the heat shrink. This is not a part that's gonna be moving. And we just need the heat shrink to keep anything from, you know, grounding. Then we just take a lighter. Just go over it slowly. Don't wanna melt anything. And then we melt the heat shrink. Well, you don't want to melt the heat shrink. You don't want to melt the wire. It's leaving, obviously. And then we just do the same thing over here. And this is technically now repaired. All right, so we are just gonna tape it down. That way it doesn't actually get pulled on or yanked on. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, would you look at that? And they light up. So now they don't have to have this ugly harness, which they recently bought. Sorry guys, but as you can see now, we've got our lights and our LEDs are working. There's our hard drive light, there's our power light. Good to go. Let's button it up, let's clean it up, and we'll call it a day. So here we go, we're going ahead and booting it up because we wanna make sure when you start messing with stuff that it's gonna work. So we're gonna make sure we get over to our OS. All I wanna check right now though is what temperatures look like. CPU's idling at 38C, 37C in the BIOS, which you know puts a small load on the CPU. And motherboard's sitting at 29C, obviously the case is open, but all of our fans are running now, lots of airflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one done. But basically, you guys have always asked me about how to troubleshoot a computer, and I just thought I'd take you along for the ride on this one, given the limited amount of information that I had. But as you saw, when we opened up the case, the first thing we saw was one of the power cables for the, mother, the graphics card was not plugged in. But I also know for a fact when I helped troubleshoot this on the phone with him, that I had him unplug the graphics card and plug it back in, and uh, maybe he just forgot to put that one in. So I'm gonna say that it was probably both plugged in when I first talked to him. But regardless, it's working now. All we had to do was replace one fan, which obviously I'm not gonna charge them for, and it's up and working and cleaned and ready to go. So this one worked out well, but the next time I have access to a broken computer, I don't wanna say I hope it's worse because I don't want that person to have to deal with the cost of fixing it, but I do wanna be able to shoot videos about troubleshooting it. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new around here. Like this video if you appreciated it. And as always, we will see you guys in the next one.